Hello, I'm Chuck Phillips of South Alabama Home Inspections, and welcome to another edition of Southern Home Talk. Uh, I'm in a crawl space. Uh, I could actually call mine a walk space because I can walk around most of mine. Uh, most people that have crawl spaces don't have that kind of luxury. Uh, but really, even if you don't have a crawl space, uh, this applies if you have a basement or a garage as well, especially if you have a block or masonry products. Uh, walls above grade and that's uh, above the ground level and that's what we have in this case here now if you have a block wall or or masonry products below grade or below the ground level uh well then this needs to be properly sealed on the outside especially the part that's below ground now but that should have been done at the time that your home was constructed and so if you're having weeping uh water coming from the bottom part of, of, of your garage or basement, wherever it may be, uh, the only way to really mitigate that problem is to deal with it on the outside part of it. And I think even I would probably use a qualified foundation contractor to do that because you can spend a lot of money and still not get nothing accomplished. So anyway, what's going on in mine is I encapsulated this about four years ago, and I did a pretty good job doing it. Uh, but anyway, I, my dehumidifier, which is over there, it's a really good one. It's made by Frigidaire. It's a 70 pint unit. Uh, it was having to work uh, more than I wanted it to. And I couldn't quite understand why that was. I mean, why was my dehumidifier having to work so hard to keep this area dry down here? And so what was going on when I took a moisture rigging of this wall, uh, it was pretty high. And so... Anyway, let's turn my moisture meter on and calibrate it. This is an X-Tech. I use this on a lot of my inspections as well, so hit the calibrate button here. And so I'm, I'm going to just take a reading. I've already got one light coat on this wall already, but I haven't got all areas yet. So let's see, we've got 543, 521, and the 400s. So we get down here where it's actually been sealed, we get in the 300s. So the game plan now is to seal the inside of this wall with these three different products, which I've purchased. Uh, one I got from Walmart, which is the damp lock. Uh, the kilts I got from Home Depot and the dry lock I got from Amazon. Uh, the top product up there is uh, Ghost Shield, uh, also called Solox Attack, and that's a, a Siloxane product that's going to be used on the exterior side of this wall. And so what the game plan is, is to seal, completely seal the interior side of this wall the best I can possibly do it, and even these cracks here as well, I'm going to use caulk to fill any kind of voids like that because air will carry moisture uh, more than anything else and so that's really important those be sealed but anyway I'm going to apply the siloxane to the exterior side of this and what the siloxane product will do is it'll make the outside or, or the exterior side of this wall water repellent but it will still make it uh, allow it to breathe and that's what you want in this case you want the inside sealed the outside water repellent water repellent but breathable and and that's the right way to do this uh, especially in our climate where we are here in the deep south uh, it has to be done the right way otherwise you'd be spending a lot of money not getting anything accomplished and so we'll see at the end of this video how successful this method is and hopefully it'll uh, keep my dehumidifier dehumidifier from having to work so hard too and so that's really a, an end goal as well because it costs money to run those. They're kind of like running a dip, an air conditioning unit in a way because the way these things work is they, they pull in air and then they uh, cool that air over those coils, kind of like an air conditioner, and it causes that uh, air being drawn into it to reach dew point and then that hose carries it to the exterior part of the house. And so the less that runs, the more money I'm going to save too. Uh, also, too, I mean, it's my opinion that, that these Frigidaire units work about as good as those $2,000 ones that are supposed to be dedicated for crawl spaces. And so just know that as well. 
Uh, but yeah, just keep watching this video. I mean, it's going to have several parts to it where I jump in and out with different things. And by the end of this, hopefully we'll have a good, clear, concise answer uh, to deal with this issue. Uh, keep okay, carrying on with this project I'm doing down here in the crawl space as far as sealing this block wall, I figured I would go ahead and add to this story. Uh, I used three different products just to try them out to see how well they work. And this damp block came from Walmart. Uh, the kilts I got from Home Depot. And the dry lock I ordered off Amazon. And of the three, uh, the kilts seemed to go on the best. It seemed to fill those small pores better. Uh, but all of these work good enough. And so only time will tell how well it holds up. And that's really the, it's called the test of time. But it's, if it's just a block wall that's above grade, I would use either one of these. Just whichever you can get a hold of is just what I would use. Now, if you're trying to seal uh, weeping water in a basement wall where it's below grade, it's probably going to be subjective whether or not this is going to stop it. Now, I'm also using just any old kind of caulk. It doesn't really matter uh, about what type of caulk you use as far as what I'm using it for. And that's just to seal up small cracks in this block wall to keep air uh, transfer from coming into here and carrying moisture with it which it'll do and I also have this moisture meter here as well and so uh, if you remember back in the first part of this it was close to 500 was what I was getting on the reading so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and then calibrate it it's got a button on the side you can do that with this is actually a pretty good tool okay now I'm gonna go to the block wall and see what kind of readings we have so we're basically at around 300 and where before I painted it, it was almost like say 500 so it's come down quite a bit uh, since I've painted it and I may put another coat in some of these areas as well but as far as the caulk is concerned I probably will caulk these seams because it's a possibility there could be some air transfer coming through those seams as well so any kind of penetration you, you have coming through your walls to the outside you know, I recommend using caulk uh, to fill them up, and you, it doesn't really matter what type of caulk you use because, like I say, it's in a basement wall away from any kind of view. So anyway, I figured I would go ahead and uh, show you this part of this, and so the next stage of this is going to be uh, using the Siloxane product on the, uh, the exterior part of this wall, and which is, that's actually, you got to leave the back side of this breathe, breathable, and so that's what this product will do. It kind of acts like rain x where it just makes the water uh, just beat off the block wall, but it still remains breathable. And that's what you want to do, especially here in the south. You want to seal the interior part of the wall and then waterproof the back side of it where it's still breathable. And you have to work within a temperature range with this as well because both the siloxane and these products here require that it be a certain temperature before you apply it and basically with this it has to be above 50 degrees so another way to determine that is to take one of these laser things and you can see up about 59 degrees so well above that mark and the same thing with the siloxane product and this is really a good time of year to do these sort of projects I know everything gets hyped up in the springtime uh, for projects and stuff but really there's a lot of things you should be doing during the fall and winter time when we have drier weather during this period and that's why I'm doing these projects right now because they need to be done and it's you're not you know it's not 100 degrees and 90 percent humidity and all that can affect uh, this kind of project that I'm doing so uh, just keep staying tuned because I'm going to do the the next part of this is going to be on the siloxane all right take care okay we're down to this uh, I won't say the second, but probably the fourth, the fifth part of this. And I'm on the exterior part of this wall now. And so now it's time to put the uh, siloxane on here. This, this wall is relatively clean. It has stayed this way for the last four years because I put a product called Zycosil on there around 2016, I think it was. And I just didn't have enough of it, so it just got a light coat of it. But even that light coat was sufficient to prevent fungus from growing on it. And so now I'm fixing to put a really heavy coat of siloxane on here. It's not Zycosil, it's a different product, uh, but it has pretty good reviews and I expect it to work much the same. I'll, I got it off of Amazon, so I'm gonna show you how I mix that product up. But if you have a wall like this 
if you're planning on doing what I'm doing, it needs to be really clean. So if you have fungus or mold or whatever else on it, it that needs to all be cleaned off uh, prior to applying this product. It also, you want this wall to be as dry as it possibly can as well. But in my case, all I really needed to do was just take a broom and just sweep it all the way down just to get any kind of loose debris that might might have been hanging on to this. So just stay tuned guys because I'm fixing to mix this stuff up and show you how this I'm going to apply it. Alright, we've made it to the mixing part now so I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got. Uh, this is called Siloxitec 8500 Concrete Masonry Sealer. About 170 bucks for a gallon of this. It's a concentrate. Uh, it's a milky color. looks just like milk. And so I'm going to mix this up in two and a half gallon batches. Now this will dry clear uh, after it's applied. And so, like I said, doing the two and a half gallon uh, batches because I got a half a gallon of siloxa and two gallons of distilled water, which is going to make half of a five gallon batch. This, this one gallon is, is a concentrate for five gallons of product. So uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pump up sprayer and I'm gonna pour one bottle of this distilled water in first so none of the product settles to the bottom. So let's go ahead and take this right here. Pour it on in there. I'm gonna leave a little bit of water in here so I can rinse out that flask because I use the product out of this. Uh, the best way to determine if you a half gallon is just to get a half gallon empty jug and fill it up halfway. And so this actually has the siloxa in it. And that's why I wanna leave some water left over. Now uh, need to mention this as well you should use distilled water and the reason why you want to use distilled water is because it doesn't have any minerals in it and so that can actually affect the product it's really important that you use the distilled water when you're mixing this product together so I'm gonna go ahead and put this little bit left in there too didn't leave too much residue okay now all I got to do is just put this in there Followed up by the second gallon. The way it's going in there, probably mix it up. So there we go. Got it. So now what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of of this left and pour in here. So I can get all the product out of there. And then pour that in there. Okay, guys, I got a two and a half gallon batch. And like I said, uh, this Siloxitec is designed uh, to do five gallons of concentrated product. So this is a concentrate. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the back so you can read the back label. That might be really beneficial. You can also just freeze this frame, uh, just hit stop if you want to read uh, this entire label back here in the back. You can also go online and find out more about it as well. Uh, this is a pretty good product even though I haven't used it yet. I'm, looked at the reviews on it and I'm, I have a lot of confidence in it so anyway let's go ahead and start applying this product on the wall now well all right well two and a half gallons actually did this entire wall with two coats and that's approximately eight foot by 50 feet so uh, this product went pretty good ways and that's with like I say with two coats now uh, what I've done they want you to put this uh, second coat on wet you know while the wall is still wet but also you want to stand by and, and hit any dry spots that you might see uh, just to touch that tells you that area is actually soaking up more of the product and you want to go ahead and hit them as you see those dry spots so 
that's what I'm doing. Uh, you can see right there it's starting to dry up a little bit there. And just hit those any any place you see any dry spots. That's what you want to hit. And so anyway, uh, this is about the end of this here. So what I'll do is do a, another follow-up to show you how this product actually repels water uh, from this side of the wall. And then I'll also take some more moisture tests too to see uh, ex exactly how much moisture this wall is holding after I've done this. So uh, just keep hanging in there, guys. Thanks. All right, let's see what the moisture level on the interior wall is now. It's showing dry, 226. Remember at the beginning of this episode, we were almost at 500, well into the 400s as far as moisture. And so now I have actually done a, a fairly decent job and it's still not completely through. You can see these corner areas where I didn't get any of the dry lock on it. And I'm going to go back with a brush and really try to get as much of this as I possibly can sealed. And that has made a huge difference already. My dehumidifier is not running near as much as it was before. So it's not having to work as hard to keep this uh, space dry. And so that's going to save me money as well because it takes power to run that. Basically what you're doing when you're running a dehumidifier is you're really running an air con another air conditioner like a window unit uh, because it cools the air over those coils and causes the humidity in the area to, uh, to reach dew point to where it can be uh, turned to liquid form and then carried to the outside. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cap, recap what was done. Uh, I pretty much said that we used uh, these three products here uh, as far as the interior, the damp lock kilts and the dry lock. Uh, this ghost shield was used on the exterior wall. It's a Siloc same product. It's about 170 bucks for this one gallon jug, uh, but it makes five gallons of concentrate and two and a half gallons was used to do a wall uh, approximately 50 feet long by eight feet with two coats. And so let's just go outside and take a look to see how well that did. I don't know if it shows up in the camera, but you can see all that beaded water right there. Let's see if I throw some more of it on there. That water's beating up just like it would on your windshield if you use rain -X on it. And the good thing is it will seal this area here, but also um, leave it permeable, you know, so this wall can breathe. And that's what you want, like I said earlier, is for the exterior portion of the wall uh, to be water repellent, but breathable. And then the inside wall sealed and that's exactly what I was able to accomplish with the uh, damp lock kilts and the dry lock now if there's any questions you have please put them in the comments and also uh, I'm open to uh, ideas as well I'm always open to new things and so if you have anything you might want to add please add that as well uh, but most of all I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this episode and Thanks again for everything you've uh, offered me in the past. I've greatly appreciated it. Appreciate the business I've gotten from my past customers that watch this channel. And also, you might want to share some of this as well because most everyone uh, either has a garage or basement or, in a lot of cases, a crawl space. And so this is why I put these episodes out there. I don't make any money for doing it. Uh, I have a non-monetized channel. And so I basically do this to... Uh, help you out there, hopefully, uh, to mitigate any issues uh, that can potentially become big problems as a result of not uh, doing your due diligence and taking care of your house. Uh, thanks again. Have a good one, guys. See you next episode.